Moods, and welcome to News at Nine. I'm Devere Dudley. And I'm Natalie DeFord. Here's a look at our top stories. 208 Garfield hosts a student art gallery. We take a look at how the food symposium helped out the Garden Club. And PLU In Focus looks at summer employment tips for college students. All that and more next on News at Nine. The annual dance performance is kicking off this weekend with a new look and a new visiting director. Storm Gerlach spoke with director Paula Peters about this year's dance concert and some changes we might be seeing. Dance 2014 overall is what I'm calling a repertory dance concert. So we have uh, 10 different choreographers. The tradition has always been to have choreographer auditions, so I did that this year also. The way that I like to choose people for choreographers is people coming in very prepared so that they have a very clear idea that they can articulate really clearly um, so that I know that it's not just kind of like I want to make up a dance. I really want to hear that they have a vision and something to say and how they want to say that. So that's, that's how the people for this particular concert were chosen. All of the students here are really, really positive. In just an overall sense that they really support each other and are um, working together as a community. So it's been a really nice experience. The guest choreographer's presentation and her interpretation of a story engulfed around a person who has a mundane job and then her, fa her fantasy is disclosed during this dance. It is formulated in such a way that it is, it is retailed, it is told by fairies that bring this her dream to life. I am thing one. Um, I am one of the troublemakers of this piece that instigate a lot of what is happening in it. Um, I am the one that brings the first initiation to her that her dream is actually coming out of the trash can that this show is going to be a show of variation, a show of entertainment. It's going to be an evening of elegance and an evening of entertainment that everybody should come to and that we all are going to produce a very spectacular show for Dance Concert 2014. I'm really excited about it because it is really diverse. Like the choreography is really diverse, people's ideas are really diverse, um, the way they get at those ideas are really diverse. Um, so the overall thing is, it, what, how I'm looking at it is really a celebration of the different talents of these young choreographers and of the, the dancers that you have here in the community. So it's, it's really a celebration of movement and ideas through choreography. Dance 2014 opens Friday evening at 7.30 with a follow-up show that Saturday at the same time. Tickets are $3 for PLU students and community members or $8 for general admission. Leave a comment on our website telling us what you thought about the show. 208 Garfield Coffee Shop hosted its first student art gallery on Friday. Advertised as an evening of fine art and elegance, students and staff turned out to support artists Rachel Tehan and Kaylee McEvely. Titled Odd and Imperfect, the art gallery showcased a series of work, including Day of the Dead inspired pieces. This was the first gallery for both senior artists. Tehan spoke of how it felt to have her artwork shown in a public gallery for the first time. It's a little nerve wracking to have my art displayed um, where it's so public, everyone can see it. Um, but that's part of the process, you know, as an artist, you can't just make work and then have it sit under your bed. It's got to be shown. The food, the food Symposium concluded Saturday with a work party in the community gardens at Trinity Lutheran Church and at PLU. The Food Symposium helped spike attendance for the PLU Garden Club work party. Uh, my name is Jennifer Watt. I am the garden manager here on campus and I, I am in charge of the PLU Community Garden. The PLU Community Garden is a student-run uh, garden on campus that people can come in and volunteer their time and help produce fresh local food for local food banks and our volunteers are of course allowed to take some of the fresh produce for themselves because they help grow it. I'm Suzanne Barnes. I am the Garden Club President. I just like being out here and um, Living in a city, you don't you don't have much 
opportunity to get your hands dirty to just do something that doesn't require a bunch of thought. And so, um, just, be, just, just being able to come out here and weed for a little while and take out my frustration on plants, it's always nice. We have a weekly work party on Saturdays from 10 until noon. So normally on our Saturday work parties we get three to five people and we normally weed out beds or plant new things or try and maintain the beds that we have going. This past Saturday, uh, because of the food symposium, we had uh, between 20 and 30 people show up and help out at the garden, which was an amazing amount of people to have in the garden at one time. Because we had so many people, we managed to completely revamp three of our beds that had been follow for close to two years now. And we managed to plant eight beds worth of vegetables, um, vegetable seeds, as well as completely weed out four of other beds including that. We also managed to get our compost back up to speed, so we managed to get a lot of stuff done and I'm really excited for how much we're going to be able to start getting done in the future because of how much headway we've gotten done. Gardens are things that keep going and so no matter what happens, no matter how many people we get in here on, on one day, the next week there will always be something more to do. Um, it's, it's a never-ending battle against the weeds, really. So there's, there's always something to do. There's always weeding to do, or there's compost to turn, or um, as we get further along in the season, there's always something to harvest. If I could let anyone know about the garden, I'd want them to know where it is. Uh, we are at the corner of 121st and 8th Avenue Court South, uh, right across the street from Ingram Hall, and uh, right down the block from Mary Baker Russell. And we're actually two houses down from the Women's Center as well. It's just a nice place to be, and you can just slow down for an hour and just relax and do something that isn't your classes and it isn't drama, and it's just a nice quiet place to sort of unwind for a little bit. The food symposium may be over, but volunteers can still work in the community gardens at any time. The Garden Club hosts work parties every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. till noon. Volunteers from the Tacoma area gathered recently at the Swan Creek Park in Midland to try new ways of growing food. Local organic gardeners are experimenting with an unconventional method of urban food production. They are planting a food forest at Swan Creek Park in Midland. Unlike a traditional garden, a food forest attempts to work with natural landscapes and native species already in the area to produce food in a more sustainable way. The food forest has a much more natural setting and we're um, taking out some invasives but we're also putting a lot of food into the environment that you would naturally find there but we're kind of just amping it up a little bit. Last Saturday, 40 odd volunteers showed up to help out in this community project. We live in Tacoma and we live um, probably about a five minute drive away from here. We go to almost all of the the work parties and we just said this is a great use of our time and great people to be around so they inoculated logs in a shady grove with fungi spores which will eventually grow into patches of edible mushrooms fungi expert jay schindler traveled all the way from eugene oregon to help teach volunteers about fungi cultivation a lot of the soil fungi that we're going to work with can tolerate a mix of hardwood and conifer and so the main one that we're going to focus on that would throw off of woody chip material um, that's decomposing or partially decomposing is the King's Trafaria. Mushroom cultivation works particularly well in the Pacific Northwest because of the abundance of growing mediums such as chipped wood and logs. Mushrooms grow in areas with limited light where other edible plants such as fruits and vegetables cannot thrive. They're also an excellent source of protein. To find out about upcoming work parties, like the Swan Creek Park Food Forest page on Facebook. Last weekend, music education students from all around the Puget Sound area met at PLU to learn from one another. Allison Haywood has more. Music teachers and music education majors alike from all over Western Washington gathered at Pacific Lutheran University for a music education symposium last weekend. This is a climactic event that is meant to bring everyone together for a day of music education um, to meet students where they're at in their education and provide some tools for expertise. 
Cameron Jacobs, a senior choral music education major at PLU and state president of the Collegiate Washington Music Educators Association, organized a full day of lectures, keynote addresses, and concerts that drew an estimated 120 participants statewide. University professors as well as high school and middle school music teachers gave the addresses. The symposium provided not only a learning opportunity for music students, but networking and professional development opportunities for current educators as well. Participants also grappled with the age-old question of why music education is important. The only way we can show that music is important is to show it through music and excellence and performance and really good teaching. When you combine those two things, I think music matters becomes less of paperwork and research and more of an acceptance of society. Say goodbye to Microsoft support for Windows XP. As of Tuesday, the company will no longer provide security updates for the software. Experts say those still clinging to the 12-year-old operating system could be left vulnerable to cyber attacks. Microsoft is advising consumers to upgrade their operating systems to Windows 8. Senate Republicans have blocked a bill that aims to even the pay gap between men and women. Democrats brought the Paycheck Fairness Act to the Senate floor this morning. Republicans tried to offer multiple amendments, but Democrats refused to promise votes. Republicans argued there are already laws against pay discrimination. They say the Paycheck Fairness Act would lead to government interference in the workplace. The vote comes just a day after President Obama signed two executive orders to strengthen equal pay laws. It's official. Stephen Colbert will replace David Letterman as host of The Late Show. CBS announced a five-year deal with Colbert earlier today to take over the late-night franchise. The 49-year-old has been the host of Comedy Central's The Colbert Report since 2005. In a statement, Colbert said, I never dreamed that I would follow in his footsteps, though everyone in Late Night follows Dave's lead. I'm thrilled and grateful that CBS chose me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go grind a gap in my front teeth. Last week, Letterman announced he would retire sometime in 2015. The date of Colbert's first show will be announced after the Letterman determines a timetable for his final broadcasts. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this commercial break. Next is PLU In Focus with Leah Traxel. This week she'll be talking to faculty members at PLU for some advice about grabbing a job during the summer hours. The bill we just passed is called the Washington State Dream Act. It's also called the Real Hope Act. It was a Senate bill that just passed. It's a simple idea. It gives all kids who graduate from Washington High Schools who have been in the state for at least three years access to financial aid. It's not a giveaway. It just means that they can compete. And a lot of kids that were undocumented weren't able to compete for that financial aid. And now they can. So here's the deal. I can show you a bunch of footage of third world countries with starving children in roofless shacks. But you've seen that all before. I can play on your emotions and explain to you why you have it so good and you owe it to the world to go out there and help others. But you already know that. The truth is, this is nothing new to you. But the world is still waiting, waiting for people like you. So what are you waiting for? Peace Corps. Life is calling. How far will you go? Welcome back to News at 9. I'm Leah Traxel with PLU In Focus. With spring break, break behind us and the last half of the semester well underway, many Lutes are thinking about their plans for the summer. Besides enjoying the sunshine, many of these plans include summer jobs or internships. To help students with the sometimes daunting task of finding those summer jobs or internships, PLU's Career Connections Office is hosting a Career Expo next Wednesday, April 16th, where students will get the opportunity to meet more than 40 employer representatives and hiring managers from companies such as Alaska Airlines, King 5 News, and the Port of Tacoma. Jody Horn, one of the event's lead organizers, gave us some tips on how to be successful at the Career Expo. It gives you a offer great opportunity to talk to different employers about jobs, internships, volunteer opportunities, careers. They are here to meet you. What, again, you really want to focus on dressing professionally. 
because this is possibly your first connection with this em with these employers and you want to make that first that first impression really count so dress professionally as though you're walking into an interview again bring your resume and be pro if if there are some companies that you see on the career on the career site on the career expo site that you're interested in talking to do a little bit of research on that company and understand what they do where you might be able to fit in considering your interests and your your passions and uh, maybe bring up some prepared questions to ask the employers and be prepared to interview. You may make such a great impression at the expo that the employer with whom you're, you're speaking will want to talk with you either during the expo or after the expo. And what a great opportunity. So just make that first impression really count. Ideally, meetings that take place at the Career Expo directly lead to job offers in the future. This is exactly the case for Hans Stegemeller after the career fair that took place this fall. I almost didn't go to the career fair. I went to the career fair and I brought five copies of my resume because there were five companies that I thought there was some chance that I would uh, look for a job at. And I handed out those five resumes and talked to the the people there representing the company and I uh, probably talked to the private uh, solutions representative for a minute maybe maybe 90 seconds and gave him a resume and I think it was the next day maybe maybe the day after the next day uh, I got an email and they wanted to interview me and they were coming to Tacoma the first internship that I did was really hard to get I applied 50 places and interviewed at two and got one offer and went there and worked and uh, I basically learned a ton <laughs> during that time. Um, this class is very different from the real world so it was really good to get that real, real world experience. I think getting a summer job that's something close to what you think you might want to do when you're graduated is pretty important because there are two possibilities. A, you learn that you don't want to do that before it's too late. Uh, it's never too late, but before it's later than you want. B, you have a really good experience on your resume. After learning about the Career Expo, we took to the streets to find out more about the students' summer jobs, jo summer plans, and asked them about the best job advice they'd ever gotten. I'm actually going back to work in Seattle at for an organization called Outdoors for All and it's a camp for kids with mental and physical disabilities where we do a lot of outdoor recreational stuff. Um, we go explore Seattle as well and just have a lot of fun all summer. I don't know, I'm pretty open. I mean, it'd just be, it'd just be a summer job, so temporary. Not too picky. Well, I'm working in the Peel Up School District as a paraeducator, so I'm working in the classrooms. I'm in, you know, um, actual school settings, and it just uh, kind of helps to solidify my decision to go into school counseling. For the summer, maybe just get like a, a job around campus or something. The best advice I've had is in relation to like what you study versus what you do, and um, honestly, it's just about how you spin what you've done. You can extrapolate tons of skills and experiences from stimulating unrelated fields of study to different jobs, so which has been great and kind of relieving that you know you don't feel tied down to your field of study. Yeah, when I was a sophomore, there's a senior in one of my classes I was talking to about internships, he did internships. His advice to me was apply everywhere you possibly can and I took that to heart and that's how I got my first internship. The best advice I got was um, probably to do something, uh, take a year kind of off before going to grad school and then do something that really relates to your major to get experience um, instead of just trying to go straight to grad school and then like end up getting burned out. So they just said to find a job that's really like something that interests you, something that's close to your major, something that'll get, give you life experience and also just looks better on your grad school application. Visit the Career Connections website to find job postings, information about upcoming events, or to make an appointment with a career counselor at www.plu.edu backslash career. Stay tuned for Sports Talk with Sam Horn and Giancarlo Santoro. We'll be back after this commercial break. This new phone is awesome. 
It has made my life so much easier. You know, I get kind of bored when I'm driving and I need to know what's going on. So now, with this huge screen, a keyboard, and a ton of apps, I can get a text and write back right away, no problem. It's like I barely even have to look at it. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back to News at Nine. I'm Sam Horn. I'm John Carlos Santoro, and you're watching Sports Talk. This evening, we thought to go with a different look. Tonight, we're the Bearded Boys. After watching the Boston Red Sox win the World Series last year, we became inspired to grow our own beards, just like those men in red. Speaking of the Red Sox, opening day occurred last week, and what an occasion it was for baseball fans nationwide. Opening day provided all the chills and memories that you'd expect of an event that should be considered a national holiday. For more on the importance of, national, of opening day, here's Sam Horn. Opening day, it seems, is becoming more and more like a national holiday. After all, baseball is our so-called national pastime. For many people, opening day is one of the greatest spectacles in sports because a multitude of games are aired on ESPN and ESPN2 all day long. Whether you witnessed a former St. Louis Cardinals pitcher Chris Carpenter throw out the game's first pitch, or Mike Trout blast a two-run home run off King Felix Hernandez, the opening day experience is unique. It's one of a kind. It's... Magical. Awesome. Legendary. Riveting. Beautiful. In case you're wondering, the Seattle Mariners are first place in the American League West Division. The PLU softball team had mixed results in its Northwest Conference road trip to Oregon schools, George Fox and Pacific this past weekend. And while the Lutes did find success against the Bruins of George Fox, Pacific proved to be a step ahead of the Lutes. The game winning run did not come until the seventh inning for the Lutes in the first game. Junior Kelsey Robinson centered to left field in the seventh inning, allowing first year Kalen Osaki to reach home plate for the winning run. The Lutes continued their good play over the Bruins in the second game by winning 3-0. Senior Katie Lowry blasted a home run in the third inning, allowing two Roots, two Lutes to run home and finish the scoring early on. A similar story followed Saturday as PLU edged George Fox by winning the third game 2-0. Runs in the second and third innings by seniors Lindsey Matsunaka and Spencer Sherwin earned the Lutes the three-game sweep. Pitcher Leah Butters took the win. Although three wins in a row left the, the Lutes feeling confident, they, they were brought back down to earth by a strong Pacific team on the Sunday doubleheader. Pacific got to work quick, quickly against the Lutes in the first game and went up 2-0 in the fourth inning. PLU's Spencer Sherwin benefited off a Pacific error and stole home in the sixth inning to make it 2-1. Pacific scored their third and final run of the game in the sixth inning. The second game against the Boxers resulted in a heartbreaking 3-2 loss in the ninth inning. The game went scoreless until the sixth inning when PLU took the lead with Lowry's run. After the Lutes went up 2-1 in the top of the ninth, Pacific turned the game around with one run and a PLU catcher error to take the first game 3-2. PLU's current record is 12-23 overall and 9-14 in Northwest Conference play. The Lutes played Whitworth this evening and won 7-3. The PLU men's tennis team had a bit of deja vu this past weekend in Oregon after losing to Pacific and winning against Willamette. 
The Leafs got the weekend off to a rough start by losing their opening game against Pacific 9-0, the exact same scoreline the boxers inflicted on PLU during their opening Northwest Conference day. Pacific swept both the doubles and singles competitions to shut out the Leafs and continue their fight for the Northwest Conference title. Despite a lopsided scoreline against the boxers, the Leafs continued their dominance over Willamette in Salem with a big 7-2 win. Head coach Rocky Poulin praised the Leafs' three doubles team, saying it was some of the best tennis they've played all year. The Bearcats put up a good fight in the singles round and took two matches of their own, but PLU's Spencer Heron, James Akubo, and Jeremy Marsh won on the final three matches to give the Lutes their second win in conference play. Following an 8-1 loss against Seattle University on Tuesday, the Lutes are 3-11 overall, 2-6 in conference. Moving towards international soccer, the English Premier League is nearing the end of their season. With only five games left, do you think Liverpool can win the title, G? Actually, I'm going with third place Manchester City. The boys in blue actually have two games left to catch up on their opponents, so if they win both games, they'll actually take first place by two points. Um, and if it comes down to it, they have scored the most goals in the league, so if there was to be a potential tiebreaker, City would actually go ahead. They have a huge game against first place Liverpool this weekend, and I think if they can win that, they will win the league. You know, G, you do have some good points, but I think the other team, the other boys in blue, Chelsea, will win the title because they're only two points behind the first place leaders right now and their defense is rock solid this entire year. They've only allowed 24 goals the entire year and out of the five teams they face in the remaining five games, two are in the relegation zone and one of the other ones is in the bottom five. So pretty weak competition. And also Chelsea was able to win against PSG in the Champions Cup and so I think with that win they'll be able to really push forward and win the title. Well I believe that's all the time we have for this evening. We will not be having an episode next week but we will be back on April 24th so enjoy your Easter break glutes. Be sure to check us out anytime at massmedia.plu.edu. For all the news and nine staff, I'm John Carlos Santoro, he's Sam Horn, good night. Go Red Sox!